Welcome, everybody, back to Befriend Us. My name is Brennus. On last Befriend Us, uh, the last Befriend Us gameplay, we had Matuna Captor, and it was really good, real heavy, real serious, but it was really, really good. So, there is a secret volume. There is a hidden volume in this. So we're going to be doing that today. I'm not going to show you where it is. You're going to find that out for yourselves. Also, apparently, it's kind of random. Like, apparently, there's, there's shit in my eyes. Get out of my eyes. So anyway, there's... It's apparently the, some of the uh, dialogue is randomized or so I heard. I don't know if I completely understand what uh, the deal is with that, but you have to find it for yourself and uh, see for yourself because I'm not going to show you how we get there. So let's get to the Befriendus secret volume, shall we? All right. Here we are. <laughs> I couldn't even, I didn't have time to fucking read it. Holy shit, is that Maple Hoof? <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> maple, maple hoof, maple hoof. <laughs> yes, here we, here, we, here you go. <laughs> I was expecting it to be so fucking like immediate. I don't know how long this is, by the way. Also, I just I was just like, you know what? Fuck it. We got one more befriend us in us. Let's do it. Uh, maple hoof. On second thought, you know what? There are plenty of weird white beasts out here. You're not sure why you were so excited about this one. You know how sometimes you see something out of the corner of your eye and your amygdala just fires off before you get a chance to consciously process the stimuli and assess the situation? That's my entire existence. I don't feel like being called out right now. It's just like that, but with horse recognition instead of fear of- uh, instead of a fear response. <laughs> No, this is merely a normal white horse with a heart tattoo, possibly a decorative clipping, grazing on a, a beach, motionless with their head up. Uh, the rules were I couldn't change the dialogue in the tweet video. <laughs> fair, fair enough. <clears throat> I'm writing around it, it's fine. <laughs> but you know, on third thought, you look at this horse again and feel something. Gaze, do not gaze. Do not gaze upon the horse as much as I want to. <laughs> Look at my horse, my horse is amazing. You avert your eyes from the vacant, seductive eyes of the horse. I love it, I love it so much. Horses aren't really all that interesting. Besides, this isn't even a horse. You guess it's a hoof beast? Or what's the equivalent of a pony? A diminutive hoofling. <laughs> Something like that, diminutive hoofling. This isn't even the only animal around here. Look, there's some sort of bear or something over- Or there's some sort of bear or something over there. They're just, you know, wild animals. Oh dear, he's coming this way, and he looks hungry. I guess y'all forgot that you're both prey animals. <laughs> Holy shit! He notices Maple Hoof, and Maple Hoof notices him. Oh! Is that the bear from, uh, Wanshi's Root? It's too late to change anything. There's no turning against the tram lines. Except the save menu, or the mouse wheel, or your other time-coded server-coded powers. At this point, there's not much your humble narrator can do to cushion the situation other than to refrain from recounting the gory details. To facilitate this, you look away and align the diegetic with the doyalist. What? Oh god, you can't look. Why is he only attacking the horse? Oh my gosh! God, I hope that's Grub Sauce or something. You are just the most terrible horse befriender. How ironic that Maple Hoof's demise was in the proximity of some readers. The loss of Maple Hoof is one of massive narrative relevance. The impact of Maple Hoof's death can be felt across paradox space, across timelines, even across conceptual scopes. The fundamental embodiment of love and ingenuity that this equine represents is something the characters, especially the reader, fundamentally cannot live without. It is like the air they breathe, an unperceived necessity, understood only at the moment it is taken away. It's like if we lost the mayor. Can you imagine how devastating that would be? And yet it remains such a mystery. We never got to hear Maple Hoof whinny as they raised their upper body and wrestled the air, staring straight at the moon, symbolically fighting the forces of fate, puppeteering them. What is this? We never got to brush their beautiful mane or hug their coat. We never got to whisper our secrets into, into an ear that we knew, for the first time in forever, would listen. Maple Hoof's death has left a sense of infinite longing, one to which we can fairly, at, uh, fairly attribute our every undoing, and which will render even the most comprehensive triumph hollow and unfulfilling. And in a sense, the fact that we cannot let go is a sign that Maple Hoof truly was too good for this world, too good for us. It doesn't get much hoarse than this. I can't fucking believe it. Say your goodbyes if you got something you can say goodbye to. <laughs> oh no! Oh, oh no! <laughs> Oh no! 
Oh my gosh. All right, well, let's see what else there is. All right, what happens? What happens if we gaze upon? You gaze into Maplehoose eyes and feel an instant connection. You understand this horse like you've never understood another person before. You feel something happen deep inside you, something magic, something spiritual. Maplehoof is part of you now. Your place, uh, you place your hand on Maplehoof's snout. I should have gotten the, I should have went with Maplehoof first. I, I, I fucked it up. I, I, I like, I completely spaced on it and I fucked it up. You place your hand on Maplehoof's snout and instead of retreating into a bar or something, you deepen your soul bond. Nay. Nay. Maplehoof doesn't say anything because they're a horse. You feel your connection, your bond. You, you do what you know you have to do. You ride the horse. You leap onto the pony in a, uh, in a surprising display of agility. Miraculously, Maple Hoof doesn't spook or kick or even just walk a few steps to the side to mess up your jump from earlier. Riding a horse is amazing. You feel like you're sitting on a horse that occasionally takes a few steps towards some grass. Because I am, you can feel the steps as if you were really standing on the ground yourself. That's not an experience you can get just anywhere. Eventually, you get off the horse to allow for the next event. Oh, okay, out of the corner you say a wild beast, probably a bear or something vicious like that. He's pretty toward you, you're a goner for sure. <laughs> Definitely going to get ripped to shreds right here in front of Maple Hoof and everything. Suddenly, at the last second, Maple Hoof jumps between you and the beast, saving your life. What is this? Oh my gosh. Horses don't usually do that. No, it's they usually eat people. It's probably... <laughs> That's, that's a reference. <laughs> it's probably only because of your once-in-a-lifetime spirit bond between horse and non-horse person. From then on, the two of you are inseparable. You love Maple Hoof, and she loves you. You... <laughs> what? I'm sorry, a horse-off? You compete in the big horse-off. It's a close one, and it looks for all the... And it looks for all the world like you're going to lose, but in the end, you miraculously pull through, proving all the doubters wrong. Wow. Your horse rivals are very embarrassed. They made- I have horse rivals now. The MSPA reader has horse rivals now. <laughs> they made a whole deal about how your horse wasn't the best horse. And now the judging time is over and the results are that your horse is perfect. Empirically. It is- I love that it, it's empirically. Like, empirical data shows that Maple Hoof is the best horse. <laughs> they all leave in shame. Forever re relegated- I almost said neglected. Relegated to the dregs of horse society. But not you. You and Maple Hoof are the upper crust. The cream of the riding crop. That's funny. That's funny. Fucking- I love the mouse cursor coming down and dragging the shit away. I- I didn't know what to expect out of this. You take your horse winnings and retire to great wealth and acclaim in a beautiful bucolic farmstead. You are the envy of all your friends and peers. Bro hoof, are you fucking kidding me? Oh my gosh. Alright, you feel like this may not have been the most serious route. <laughs> okay, a horse in the hand is worth back in the saddle. <laughs> There's a word for combining, um, uh... Uh, fucking analogies like that. I can't think of it right now. But now we gotta fuck it up. What happens if I get too excited for Maple Hoof? Maple Hoof? Oh man, oh man, it's Maple Hoof from the hit webcomic series Befriend Us. <laughs> you're going to have so many horse adventures together. Okay, okay. You're so excited you can feel your gut. You can feel your gut. Only for the first time in what, in what, uh, in what feels like forever, it's due to genuine excitement and joy rather than your body being overwhelmed with fear and mortal peril. Horse to meet you. Maple Hoof doesn't say anything because they're a horse. Oh yeah, she, he, you're not actually sure what pronouns Maple Hoof uses, and you don't really feel like sexing a horse. Yeah, you know what? That's fair. I've, uh, I, I've, I had determined the sex of guinea pigs. Is it similar? <laughs> Especially when that horse is your hero, your role model, your inspiration, the yin to your yang, the heaven to your earth, the characterization to your caricature. Maple Hoof completes you. Okay, play it cool. Excuse shame and embarrass yourself. Okay, uh, uh-oh. Oh, there's more to this. I wasn't expecting there to be more to this. Uh, 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 uh excuse shame and embarrass yourself. Ah, uh, no, see, here's the thing. If I play it cool, Maple Hoof isn't down with that. I don't know. Maple Hoof doesn't have a character. It just shows that they just show up in a couple of joke flash animations in the comic. They're just there to be there and to bring a sense of wholesomeness to the shit show that is Homestuck. Ah, uh, fuck it, we're gonna play it cool. We're gonna play it cool! Play it cool, man! Uh, calm down. Actually, I'm being handed a note here. Apparently, <coughs> animals in Homestuck have a gender of whatever the person interacting with them thinks, but Rose uses her on page 390. So we'll go with she slash her. You know, okay, fair. <laughs> Rose uses her on page 390. <laughs> Are those notes between uh, <laughs> the uh, the team for Befriendus that they shared with each other? <laughs> anyway, now that we have that settled, you need to focus, really focus. <sighs> 
It's not enough to just dig le out last night's leftovers. You need to understand every detail of the situation. Understand every data point and factor that can give you a leg up. You need to see the dotted lines and the arrows. You activate your pineal gland and open your third eye. <laughs> it's just a fucking... Is this really a fucking Undertale reference? That's so fucking funny. <laughs> you activate your pineal- uh, The secrets of the universe are laid bare for the most noble of purposes, making a killer first impression. There's the egg. It's gotta be, right? Hi, technical. What is this? <laughs> also, the music. I Absolve, baffle, rebut, rebut, excuse me. That's a word. Feche, regurgitate, naturalize, cessate. Sasate. Sasasatata. Uh, I what what is this? Uh, uh, absolve? What is so Maplehoof doesn't be absolved of anything. Maplehoof is too pure for this world. Regurgit natural What the fuck? Absolve? You told Maplehoof she didn't do anything wrong. She's a fine horse, and if there's anyone to be blamed, it's you. Maple loves this. She's going fucking wild. Gets up and does a whole excited dance on her hind legs like a puppy. Not really. <laughs> uh uh. I don't know what these words are. I barely know what rebut means. Uh, the cessate? Let's go with it. You back off entirely. You don't want to come up too strong now. Maple loves it. She goes fucking wild. Uh, not really. Okay, baffle? You try to impress Maple Hoop by telling her a complicated riddle. Only you don't remember exactly how it goes or what the real answer is, so you sort of waffle around before trying to change the subject. A good DM, if the player gives you a good enough answer, is the correct answer. <laughs> oh, no! Maple Hoof whinnies and stamps her feet on the ground, like she snorted a whole pepper spray can. She's... Not a fan, you take it. Uh, rebut! Well, actually, you suddenly say unprompted, that isn't really accurate. Horse emoji. Maplehoof looks nonplussed. Alright, fresh air. Duh, you think. Maplehoof is a horse. Horses graze! I don't, what? You ought to get Maplehoof some grass or carrots or something. There aren't any grass or carrots around, though. There aren't any grass or carrots around, though. So you just sort of scoop up some sand and offer it to her nose. Oh, no! Maple with whinnies and stamps her feet on the ground. Like she snorted a whole. Uh, she's not a fan, you take it. Got it. Regurgitate? The best way to impress someone has to be to play your to your strengths. So you start talking about a special interest you hold personally. You know everything about it, so you talk and talk and talk. What were you expecting? The tooth fairy? <laughs> Maple loves us. She goes fucking wild. Listen, I have to stop you there. This has gone on long enough. I'm afraid there's a part of the story that's come across as misleading. What? Well, hang on, what? I'm afraid it's too late. You're just. You're trying too hard at this, and it's not going to work out. Also, you're terrible at flirting. I know, I know, the timer, the buttons, the choices, it's all here. This is a video game. But at some point here, we crossed a line, and it became impossible to hit that standard you've imagined for yourself. Winning. <laughs> Are you kidding me? You want to win this route, but you don't even know what that would look like. How could you? In stories, as in life, some paths seem important or right. They seem like they're what you really need, and you can't be happy without them. At this point, Mabel <laughs> wanders off. That's sure, that's certainly some wandering there. Don't worry about her now. Keep your eyes on me. This is more important. It's fine. Don't imbue this with more emotional weight than it deserves. This is a story. A game. You can always restart and try again. Continue the story in your own way. Write your own if you want. We did. It's, in just a few lines of dialogue, MSPA reader will be sad. They didn't get what you wanted, but you're not them. Not really. Have the wisdom uh, not to multiply your own problems by proxying all the worries and troubles of the people and characters you're made to rep relate to. Their struggle is not yours. You can do better than the hero of a story that's already been written. This is really nice, actually. See you, Space Cowboy. Aww! That was weird. <laughs> you've, you've met with a terrible fate, haven't you? Oh, boy. Alright, there's one more we gotta hit. There's one more we gotta hit. Alright, Maplehoof, we go through it all. Excuse shame and embarrass yourself. Listen, this is Maple Hoof we're talking about here. This is no time to play games. Press all that for for the, se the secret literal ending. What? <laughs> oh, funny, funny. I know what all that for does. So I was like, that. Wait, hang on. What? That's funny. You visibly relax, like you're seeing an old friend. How great is this? You walk up and put a hand on Maple Hoof's nose, and everything is instantly perfect. And event and adventures. Oh man, you're gonna have so many horse adventures together. <laughs> You do the fun horse thing where horse horse stands on four legs and the person climbs up and sits on their back and you manage to keep your balance while Maplehoof wandered around for a bit. You have a whole off-screen battle with pirates like Shakespeare did in that one play Othello. It's <laughs> way funnier to me than it probably should be. I'm pretty sure it was Othello. <laughs> 
It is extremely exciting and well produced. There's all kinds of animations and several music tracks. Some of the pirate designs are actually developers in a, in a clever cameo. Real high quality stuff. In your opinion, it really seals the deal vis-a-vis -vis your time investment in this game. Any possibility of regretting your time investment is firmly put to rest. Finally, you find yourself uh, where all truly successful horse adventures end. Olive Garden. Of course, I- of course, I don't know why I expect anything different. Right-click to toggle the text box and see what- see the pressing pull. Oh, really? I don't know what I expected. <laughs> You're not entirely sure about the logistics of the situation. You were a little bit concerned about your parasocial relationship with Maple Hoof. You know, you're, you, uh, you know, you feeling like you know them because of their public career without their actually knowing you, creating a sort of one-sided, potentially unhealthy relationship based more on charisma than a genuine personal connection. Maple Hoof eats a breadstick. But, but I like that interstitial there. But no, they're actually a pretty down-to-earth horse. You're not sure you've ever uh, met any sort of, uh, any sort of, any other sort of horse, but it's still a weight off your shoulders that your time together worked out so well. But who knows what the future holds? A fast friendship, you're sure. Such a true and meaningful relationship, in fact, that nobody will ever need to talk about it or reference it again. That's how secure you two, secure you two are. <laughs> Have a little bread as a treat. Have little a bread. Never mind, I read it wrong. That was, it, it, you guys were correct. Have little a bread as a treat. Well, that's it. <laughs> Fucking hell. You feel like this may not have been the most serious route. Yeah, I gotcha. Fucking hell. Wow. All right, well, that's Befriend Us, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked it, make sure you click the like button down below and subscribe to keep up with my stuff. New videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Almost every Wednesday, like every fourth Wednesday is off. Monday and Wednesday are my stream VOTs. There's a link down to my Twitch channel so you can check out the schedule and then what I'm playing and doing there. <clears throat> uh, Fridays are the normal YouTube uploads. Comment, what was your favorite part about this? Other than all of it, because all of it was incredible. In all honesty, like, I am so uh, like, impressed and blown away at what the team behind Befriend Us did with this. It feels like, like, like an official game. It's so well done. And, like, you, I, you can just tell how much work they wanted to put into this. And how, like, just... The, the quality behind everything, the sprites, the music, the backgrounds, the story, like the writing, the dialogue, it's all so fucking good. And like, I, I, I don't really know what else to say about that. It's just really, really fucking good. And I hope you all enjoyed this. Um, and share this with your friends. Like, support, like, these small creators. Like, I love seeing, like, creators support other, like, creators support creators. Because it's just, it helps, like, build a more positive community for everybody. So I just, go play it. Go play it for yourself. Go download it. And oh, there's a link down in the description. Check out the artists who did work on this. It's, they, they did such an amazing job, and I thank you guys for making this. And I look forward to the rest of them when you guys get to them. I know it's just a passing project. So take your time, because you guys did a fucking great job with this. Not like you have to listen to me. <laughs> I, I don't have any control over you. Anyway, I'm rambling. This was incredible. I hope you guys enjoyed this. We'll see what the future holds. Y'all take care of yourselves, alright? See you next time. <laughs>